This is the HHKV Hybrid Type S and I've been using it as my main keyboard for the past year where I wrote thousands upon thousands of lines of code and in this review, I want to talk about my experience of this keyboard that is designed for a programmer like me and to see if this unassuming looking keyboard is worth the $337 price tag. I want to start this review by talking about the HHKB layout because it's arguably the most jarring thing about this keyboard. The layout of the Happy Hacking keyboard or HHKB was first introduced in December of 1996. This compact 60 key layout is optimized for programming in Unix environments and this layout has stood the test of time as the third generation HHKB that I have here has the exact same layout that was introduced over 25 years ago. The three main things that make the HHKB layout unique is the backspace key is placed above the enter key, the control key is placed where the caps lock key is usually located, and this layout doesn't include a set of dedicated arrow keys, Instead, the arrow keys are hidden on the function layer of this diamond cluster here on the right. When I was first researching about this keyboard, I was really skeptical about the placement of some of the keys because I didn't see how this was more efficient or better. But after trying it out for myself, I can say that now I'm a firm believer of this layout. It's really useful. For example, I really like the positioning of the backspace key because it makes so much sense. It's more accessible for my pinky finger as I don't need to stretch it that far away from the home row. And every now and then, whenever I switch back to a standard keyboard layout, I shrug at the positioning of the backspace key, which feels way too high for me. The positioning of the control key, on the other hand, wasn't that big of a deal for me because I'm primarily on Mac OS and most of the keyboard shortcuts that I use rely more on the command and option key that is mirrored on the bottom row here. However, I do like the fact that I can no longer accidentally trigger the cap lock key, which is now hidden under the function layer of the tab key. But to be frank, I wasn't fully on board with this layout when I first got it because I was mostly typing with the hunt and peck technique. But once I brushed up my touch typing skills and used that instead, I had a more enjoyable typing experience with this keyboard. And that was also when I took the opportunity to swap out the stock printed keycaps to the blank keycaps that you see here. When you buy a HHKB, you have an option to buy it with printed or blank keycaps. For me, I opted to get it with the printed keycaps because I wasn't mentally prepared to type on a bunch of blank keycaps. I've never done that before. And after several months of training my touch typing skills, I can now comfortably and efficiently type on a keyboard with blank keycaps. But this layout isn't perfect. Most notably, the function plus diamond arrow cluster key combination isn't as convenient as having a dedicated set of arrow keys when doing things like navigating a spreadsheet or moving the cursor between characters of a string. Adding to that, I have noticed that extended use of the arrow keys does cause fatigue to my right pinky finger. That's why I've made some modifications to my keyboard to help alleviate this issue. More on that towards the end of the video where I talk about how I've configured my HHKB. Another minor quirk about this keyboard layout is that the back tick button is in a reverse position this is a pretty big deal for me because I primarily code in JavaScript where the back tick is used quite a bit when writing template literals and I do sometimes end up hitting the escape button instead which is where the back tick key is located on every single keyboard. Besides the unique keyboard layout, another thing that is synonymous with the HHKB name is the Topper switches. These switches aren't the same as the typical mechanical switches that you might find from Cherry or Kale. Topper switches rely on a slider that pushes on a rubber dome that sits on top of a conical spring and that sits on top of a PCB. All of these pieces come together to register a keystroke on a topper switch. But despite having a different mechanism, these topper switches are also rated for 50 million keystrokes, meaning that the HHKB will be operational for years to come. In terms of how the topper switches feel like while typing, the 45 gram actuation force feels perfect for me, but I did swap out some of the domes to have lighter and heavier actuation forces on some keys. I did this mainly because the actuation force of topper switches is on the top of the dome versus at the middle like the Gateron Brown switches on my previous Keychron K2. That means that I need to exert more initial force to press onto a key. One thing to note here is that the HHKB that I have here is the Type S version, which denotes that it's the silent version. That doesn't mean that the keyboard is silent. It's quieter compared to other mechanical keyboards, but traditional membrane keyboards are still quieter. What this Type S version denotes is that each key comes pre-installed with silencing rings that help reduce the sound of each key press. When it comes to connecting this keyboard to a computer, the HHKB Hybrid Type S has all the modern connectivity options that you expect in 2022. The USB-C port at the back can be used as a wired connection to the computer to use as a keyboard or to program the keyboard's firmware. But even if you only use this keyboard wirelessly, the USB-C port can be used to power the keyboard. This is handy to have when your batteries run out of juice and you want to run the keyboard on a pinch. In total, this keyboard can connect with up to 5 devices, 
one device through wired mode and four devices through Bluetooth. And speaking of Bluetooth, the wireless connection that I've experienced on this keyboard has been nothing short of flawless. I've been exclusively using this KHKB hybrid via Bluetooth and the connection was rock solid throughout my time of using it. Additionally, the device switching on this keyboard is probably one of the best I've experienced. I was able to easily switch between my MacBooks, Windows laptop and iPad instantaneously and this device switching is on par with the experience that I love with my Logitech peripherals. In terms of battery life, I managed to get an average of 6 weeks of runtime with my two AA Analoop rechargeable batteries. That includes 8-12 to 12 hours of typing 7 days a week across 2-3 to three Bluetooth devices. This runtime is on par with the one that is quoted by the manufacturer PFU. One thing to note here is that I have disabled the power saving mode which is enabled by default and I felt that was a little annoying because waking it up from sleep involves long pressing the power button on the back. But as is, the 6 week battery life isn't a big issue for me because I have a stash of rechargeable batteries that I can easily swap between when the battery gets drained. One quirk to know about the HHKV hybrid is that there isn't a clear way to check the remaining battery life other than waiting for the LED indicator on the top to flash red. Unlike other wireless keyboards on the market, the HHKV doesn't relay battery information to a dedicated desktop app and in case if you're wondering, no, the HHKV cannot charge the AA batteries when the USB-C cable is plugged in. It would have been cool if it supported that. But other than that, I like the battery situation on the HHKV hybrid a lot. To some, the usage of AA batteries might be an odd choice, but I prefer it over a proprietary built-in battery which would have been hard to replace when the batteries inevitably go bad. If I were to describe this keyboard with one word, it would be unassuming. This HHKV Hybrid Type S does not look like it costs $337, there aren't any flashy RGB lights, nor does it come with a fancy called USB-C cable. In fact, it doesn't even come with a USB-C cable. Despite not having flashy features like on other expensive mechanical keyboards, the design of the HHKV Hybrid has a very refined aesthetic. From the side, you can see the keys are staggered with this gentle curve, and that paired with the near symmetrical positioning of the keys themselves make typing on this keyboard feel like a luxurious experience. The case is made out of injection molded ABS plastic which makes the keyboard lightweight but feels solid in the hand. Plastic isn't the fanciest of materials but it gets the job done. And if older HHKVs are any indication, this case will age gracefully. I have the charcoal colorway of the HHKV hybrid here and it also comes in a white colorway that is more of a classic grayish white color. I'm usually not a fan of branding on my peripherals but the branding on the top left and right corner is pretty minimal and on this charcoal colorway the branding is not really visible when looking at this keyboard off axis. And in case if you're wondering, no, the battery bump on the back here isn't visible when I'm typing on the keyboard. This is a very smart design as the protrusion for the batteries is small enough that it's hidden when you're looking at the keyboard from a standard typing angle. On the bottom, the keyboard has four rubber feet that work well to keep the keyboard from sliding on my desk and there's also two retractable feet that can be used to increase the elevation of the keyboard. I personally don't use them because I feel like the stock height of the keyboard is perfect for me. I use my HHKB without a wrist rest and if you are transitioning to a HHKB from a standard keyboard, the height difference might be something that you need to get used to. Before I conclude this review, I want to run you through how I have my HHKB set up. For the keycaps, I have them swapped with this set of blank keycaps from KVD Fans. For the spacebar key in particular, I have it inverted to make it a bit more ergonomic. Under the hood, I've strategically swapped out the stock domes to help improve the speed and accuracy of my touch typing. The backspace, function, P and semicolon keys have been swapped out with some BKE ultralight domes that have a lighter 40 gram actuation force. And for the S, F, J and L keys, I have swapped them out for some BKE light redux domes that have a heavier 50 gram actuation force. As for the dip switches on the bottom of the keyboard, I have left switch 1 off and turned on switch 2. This configures the keyboard to register keys for Mac OS since that's the primary OS I'm using this keyboard on. I have switch 3 turned on and that changes the delete key to be a backspace key. I left switch 4 and 5 off and I have switch 6 turned on to disable the power saving mode. In terms of the keys themselves, I've remapped a few of them through the HHKB keyboard key map tool and all the changes I have made are on the function layer. I remapped the function plus tilde key to be a print screen button as I take screenshots pretty often. The function plus backspace key is remapped to be a delete key and the function plus E, D, S, F keys have been remapped to act like the arrow keys. But that's about it, that's how I customize my HHKB Hybrid Type S. Overall, the HHKB Hybrid Type S is a really fun keyboard to type with the low noise and tactile feedback from the topper switches, the compact footprint of this HHKB layout, and the modern connectivity options like a Bluetooth connection and a USB-C port make it a real joy to type code on. 
But the bottom line here is that yes, the $337 price tag of the HHKB Hybrid Type S is a hard pill to swallow, but I think it's worth it when I frame this keyboard as an investment towards a tool that will help my coding slash typing experience be more comfortable for years to come. Because as a software engineer, my job at the end of the day is to write code and this keyboard will help me write code more comfortably. I hope you found this review helpful. Let me know down in the comments section if you have any specific questions about the HHKB Hybrid Type S or you just want to have a chat. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and I'll be sure to get you more videos about tech and lifestyle. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you very soon in the next video.